three, two, one. What's poppin' YouTube? It's your boy Anand Raman coming at you with episode three of the Instant Ramen Podcast. Over here, we're tend to talk about anything that I want to talk about. And without further ado, let's get started. Guys, the other day, I decided to try out something new. I decided to take a listen to country music. Now, I know what you're thinking. A lot of people out there hate on country music for no reason whatsoever. But I actually really like it because, for one, it does sound pretty good. And two, I really find it funny because there's recurring themes going on throughout country music, which when you figure out what the repeating pattern is, it's pretty funny. All right, so in my experience with it, they like to talk about chewing tobacco, drinking beer, and getting girls a lot. And once you figure out this repeating pattern, guys, I shit you not, listening to country music can become slightly above hilarious. If you were to ask me to sing my own country song right now, I, I would be able to. I'd be able to make one up right on the spot, and it would go something. It would probably go something like this. Um, just pretend like there's country, there's an instrumental country song, but guitar banjo plucking in the background, all right? Dun, 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 dun. My name is Billy, I'm kind of silly, and I got a big old willy. My dad took me once on a fishing trip, but he said, son, first pack this lip. So we went on and we got on a boat. We made sure to bring our banjo and our billy goat. Then in the morning, we made eggs and bacon. And he seasoned that shit with a little Copenhagen. (laughs) Then we went out back and shot some queers. But first we chugged that six pack of natty beers. You know my dad is the best all around. And we smoked that Copenhagen brown. Dude, chewing tobacco is a recurring theme that I found throughout country music so much that it's literally Blake Shelton is uh, one of the songwriters that I listened to the other day. And he's like, I lived it in a pack a lip and then I take out of my beer a sip. And then I went out <laughs> on my bandwagon, but first I packed a fat lip of Copenhagen. I love that shit, dude. That dude, you cannot tell me that is so funny. Literally, it's the cure for anything, dude. <laughs> I tripped and I fell and I broke my leg. My dad said, "Go get the Copenhagen Meg." And then he took that tobacco. He put it on my leg and it felt pretty good. <laughs> Just like I knew it should. Oh, man. And that would be my country song. If I were to make one up, I would be able to make one up right on the spot. And there you go. Best seller. What would I call it? Um, Take a sip, pack a lip, dude. Take a sip and pack a lip. And I would condense that even more. I would make it sip and lip. Sip and lip, dude. It's all you gotta know. And it's a beautiful thing. I think I could get into country music if I really tried, you know? I'm, I'm not not hating on it or anything. I just noticed that it's hilarious to me. Um, today, we got the double shot espresso because it's getting kind of late tonight. I wanted to record the podcast earlier in the day, but I had an interview to go to because I'm doing things because I'm a human. And so I actually recorded one earlier in the day. It didn't come out the way I liked it. So I was like, scratch that here at the Instant Ramen Podcast. We are about to do things right. And so I said to myself, Billy, let's get a little silly and let's record it again. Now, without further ado, guys, I'd like to move on to the Facebook shitpost of the day. I'm going to start this new thing where I talk about something on Facebook that someone has posted that annoyed me. That grinded my gears, you know, my pet peeve, whatever those things are. So, guys, sharing this photo on Facebook or tagging your friends in it has become a new trend. Type in the comments at the rate S, and whoever pops up owes you a McDonald's. Hey, how about they don't owe you nothing, man? Because the world doesn't owe you nothing, huh? Oh, but Anand... 
It's just, it's a silly social media trend. No, dude. I actually want someone to tag me in one of those now so I can be like, all right, cool. What do you want? A McChicken? Big Mac? All right, let's go. I'll get them in my car. I don't have a car, but pretend I did have a car. I take them in my car. I drive them out to the farthest McDonald's in the corner of the country. You wanted this McDonald's, right? All right, we're going to go get it now, dude. I hope you like sausage and egg McMuffin, motherfucker. Anyway. I'll take him out to the farthest reaches of the country, find that McDonald's, tell him to go order it, and I'll be waiting in the car. And he forgot the car had the automatic close button. Skirt! Because I'm peeling out of there faster than you can say, Ronald McDonald, where's my cheeseburger? ba pa 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 I'm loving it. <laughs> and that is the Facebook shit post of the day. <laughs> if you tag your friends in that and they actually get you something either they're oblivious to how stupid this social media trend is or they're just they think that you're a little slow and you're missing a chromosome so they're like you know the least i can do is uh get this guy a meal <laughs> what man i was thinking about this the other day and uh I, I really miss New York City when I used to live there. I, I loved the way people used to talk and their dialect, their lingo and stuff like that. I made a whole video about New York City slang. But what I forgot to mention, what I forgot to mention was the way New York people would start up fights. Because that was the greatest, guys. New York City people f start up fights with statements that are so contradictory, you're not even sure that you're in a fight with them. It's beautiful. The art form of it goes a little something like this. Hey, you got a problem with me, buddy? You don't got a problem with me. I know you don't got a problem with me, buddy. Hey, you want to take this outside? You want to take this outside? I know you don't want to take this outside. And the funniest thing of all is I'm so polite. Even though it's a rhetorical question, I feel obligated to respond. So they might be like, hey, you want to take this outside, buddy? I mean, I guess it's a nice day out. We could... Nah, you don't want to take this outside, buddy. Yeah, you're right. We could probably get mugged out there. Let's just stay inside and chill. Hey, you got beef, fam? Nah, dude, I, I don't. I'm I'm a Hindu, so I don't uh, partake in beef. I know you don't got beef with me, fam. Yeah, Krishna would probably frown upon that. I, 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 hey, you want to catch these hands? You want these hands, buddy? I I got my own. I'm good. I don't need a hand. It's all good. You know, I would probably even think, <laughs> dude. I love that. At first, I actually thought they were asking me if I wanted a hand, but they were like, you want these hands. I could have got knocked out so many times without me even realizing it. And that in and of itself is so funny. Oh, I don't need a hand, man. I'm fine. Next thing I know, I'm waking up with stars around my head and he's walked off with my wallet. Hey, I know you don't got a problem with me, buddy. Do you got a problem with me, buddy? It's amazing, man. It, it's, it's great. But, you know, I'm not I'm not one to instigate or start things, but I just like I like to spice in things up a little bit. You know, I like to I like to make my life a little interesting. So recently when I've been going to the grocery store and I've been just, you know, shopping for goods, I like to make things interesting, guys. So what I have been doing is I've been going up to the grocers and the people that work at the supermarket and I ask them, hey, where can I find the horse meat at? And I look them dead in the face, serious as all hell. And I ask them, where is the horse meat at? And I like to believe it myself that I have come to this grocery store and I've bought horse meat before. And they'll be like this Filipino attendant who worked there. I think it was one of her first days on the job. Actually, she said, sir, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think we sell that horse meat over here. And I said, oh, you guys don't keep that in stock anymore? All right, well, um, could you ask your manager? Just let me know, all right? Uh, no pressure. She was like, yes, sir. Next time you come, I'll be sure to ask where it's at. It made my day because I, I, I like to make things happen and then leave and then create a whole picture of what's happening in the background now that I've created that scene over there. So I like to think that once I've left and I've bought all of my groceries, that Filipino woman's going to go to her boss on the first or second day on the job and say, hey, where's where's the horse meat at? And he's going to be like, I don't know what kind of meat they serve in your country. 
I, I don't know why I gave him a southern accent, but I just picture it with whatever accent. He's like, no, 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 we don't do this over here. We don't, we don't sell the horse meat. And, and the look on her face would probably be insane. I also asked for a tortoise meat. Dead serious face. And why do I do these things, guys? Why do I put myself in these situations? It's because life sometimes, life is three-dimensional, but for me, sometimes it can feel one-dimensional. You know what I mean? I feel like we're just living on this one reality, on this one plane, and we're just seeing the same things over and over again. It can be a cycle. It can be an endless loop of things where you're waking up, you're brushing your teeth, you're going to your same shit job, and you're coming back, you're watching a TV show, and you're falling asleep with next to your Chinese food on the table. And I can get sick and tired of that. I need change. I need challenge. I need things to motivate me and I need things to be different every day in life and that's why I've been starting this podcast just so I can get my get my voice out there and see what I can attract out of it and so that being said I like to do these things from time to time you know sometimes if there's a parent and he's got a child with him I'll be standing kind of like in the corner or far away from him and I'll look at the kid and I'll make some funny faces I'll go you know, I'll, I'll do some, I'll do some wacky shit. I'll be like, huh? I'll point at them, be like, hey, and they'll, they'll try to bring attention to their parents, and they'll be like, mom, mom, look, strange man's looking at me and making funny faces. And right when little Timmy does that, I'll turn around and I'll pretend like I wasn't looking at him at all, and I'll pretend like I'm a straight-faced adult. Why do I do this? Because it creates distrust at an early age between the parent and his kid. Am I fucked up for doing that? Wait, hear me out. My reasoning is, if I do this, then the parent's going to want, they're not going to want to live with a liar, the boy who cried wolf. When that kid turns 18, as soon as he turns 18, go out there and stop being such a liar. Go out there and make something of yourself. It's going to make him independent. And you know why he's going to be independent? Because of that strange man that stared at him at the store 18 years ago, but his parents didn't believe him. I'm thinking of this kid's future. I'm thinking about who he's going to grow as a, a man in society. You know what I'm saying? So you could you could come up with reasons as to why this isn't ethical all day, but I'm the one who's who's that kid's fictional daddy, dude. I'm that kid's fictional daddy, and he doesn't know about it, but in my dreams, I'm the background character, where he's walking around, and he's having that weird dream every every day, where he's in the pool, and the tentacles are coming to get him. I'm the one in the background who's just kind of standing there and chilling, and staring at him, but he doesn't realize it. I'm just, I'm just an extra character. I'm, I'm uh, lead actor number four in the sidelines. <laughs> Oh, man. So, I haven't had the Starbucks Double Shot Espresso up until this point, but I highly recommend it. It's pretty darn good. I thought it would be just straight up uh, dark and black coffee, but I realize now it comes with milk. So, just, uh, yeah, guys, live live life different. Try different things. Espresso yourself. Um, What else? You know... My older sister, I love her so much, but she used to play me for a damn fool when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm looking at you. And what she used to do is every time I would be uh, in a bad behavior, like in a bad mood and I wouldn't do what I was supposed to do, I'd leave my toys laying around. You know what she would do? She would threaten to call up the boarding school on me. And she would say, I'm calling up the boarding school and she would take a phone and literally pretend to call up an imaginary boarding school. Now, at the time, I didn't question things, but now that I look back at it, why didn't I? There's so much logistics at play that don't make any sense over there. You're calling up the boarding school? Oh, what's the name of the place? Oh, so it's just the one boarding school that that captures all of the unruly kids and keeps all of them in there? How do they house these many unruly kids? How do they have the capacity to fill up all of these unruly kids all around the world? And it's called the boarding school? Who came up with that idea, huh? That's a human resources nightmare. A boarding school for all of the bad kids? That's not a boarding school. That's a freaking hoarding school. Huh? <laughs> and... You know what? I'm ashamed to say it, guys. I'm ashamed to say it. It used to work on me. 
I I knew something was fishy when every time she would call them up, they would never come get me. But I didn't want to take a chance. I didn't want to take a chance, so I would go and I'd be like, okay, okay, I'm gonna go do it. I'm gonna go, gonna go clean up my room. I'm gonna go get my act together, things of that nature. But I bet I always had this idea where if they did come and get me, they would come and put me in a straitjacket. And I always had that picture that the boarding school would come and I'd be like, you can't, you'll never take me alive. And they would put me in a freaking straight jacket, drag me in there. And then as soon as I would get there, there would be a kid all dusty and ashy, filled with like coal dust from working in the coal mines. And he would look at me and because <laughs> he's eight years old, he'd be like, what did they get you for? <laughs> and, and I would be like, I, I didn't pick up my toys. I didn't clean up after myself. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, I, I left the faucet on. <laughs> oh my god and he'd be like I-, I have to get back to work the warden's coming and then he would just run away and scurry away and then it would be kind of like the Shawshank Redemption but I would be a little kid and I would just you know bury my way a non frame. I don't know about a non frame, but let me tell you that boy could crawl through a hole like it was a gay man on another gay man <laughs> Oh my god, dude. That's that's incredible. Uh on a slightly more serious note, lately I I want to share everything with you guys. I want to share my life with you guys. So, I just want to say lately I've been getting hemorrhoids, guys. Yeah, the piles. If you don't want if you don't know what that is, it's uh it's 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 when veins pop in your anal cavity which causes a kind of lump and it's not I'm not sitting pretty that's let's just keep it at that all right um you know why it happened it's cuz I sit on the toilet on social media for too damn long and I, I I don't know why I do these things, but sometimes I'll sit there for half an hour, for 45 minutes is it disgusting yes am I a monster yes it just social me is social media addicting fuck yes but you know what i i'm i i see the light in every situation dude so if people ask me what i have i'm gonna say i got roids i got the roids and they're gonna be like oh you have steroids you do okay uh what kind of steroids do you have testosterone trend i'm gonna be like nah nah I got the hem hem, bruh. (laughs) I got that straight hem hem, bruh. Yo, you want the best roids in the market? I'm packing weight, son. It was the size of a pea earlier, but now it's the size of a fucking golf ball, my dude. It hurts when I sit down. I got that hem hem, bruh. You know how there's the music awards, the Emmys? Well, I got the Hemmys, my dude. You want some Skittles? Well, I got some Hem and Hems. <laughs> you want Eight Mile, dude? Eight Mile? I'll give you Eight Pile. Eight Pile with Hem and Hem. <laughs> hem and Hem, dude. Because I got the hemi hemi roids. Know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to put any antiseptic cream on it. I could. I could fix it up with that. I could do everything. But the only time I lube up my asshole is when I have another man penetrating my backside. And that's never. <laughs> so I'm just not going to do it, all right? I'm going to wait it out. I'm just not going to sit on the toilet for that long anymore. And I think it's going to fix itself, all right? <laughs> wow, this podcast took the most twisted turns but i loved it guys and that's exactly what happens on the instant ramen podcast if you enjoyed this episode please please smash that motherfucking like button hit that subscribe button this is episode three of the instant ramen podcast it's your boy and our ramen out